Thank you, Acting Speaker. I rise today to speak on the Births, Deaths and Marriages Registration Amendment Bill 2019. The proposed reforms in this bill allow for Victoria to better align with other jurisdictions in Australia. This, this legislation would simply allow individuals to better reflect on who they are. The changes in this legislation won't affect the majority of us here. It is also an important step in helping create a more inclusive society here in Victoria and to help the trans and gender diverse community feel connected to our inclusive society. For most of, most of us here in Parliament and indeed in Victoria, we never experience the emotional impact of having to explain constantly who we are or to justify yourself to others about such a basic fundamental concept as our own identity. If someone's gender identity doesn't match the sex recorded on their birth certificate, businesses, organisations, government and institutions may ask unwittingly questions inappropriately. Think about the things we do on a regular basis, opening bank, bank accounts, applying for credit, enrolling in study. We can navigate the world with applications and forms for government or business without the need to explain ourselves. We never have to explain who we are. It's something we, we, we don't need to give a second thought to. But there are those here in our community who know who they are, yet their birth certificate says something different. For them, it's an unnecessary burden to be forced to justify constantly who they are. For the people concerned, for them, this amendment makes a world of difference. Currently, a person can only change the record of sex on their birth registration if they have undergone sex affirmation surgery. Surgery, as we know, always comes with risk and unfortunately also costs, not just financial. If an individual decides not to go through surgery because of financial or health risks, or if undergoing painful and invasive surgery is not for them, then they are currently excluded from changing their record. Those opposite, by not supporting this amendment, are effectively saying that a family in Kew or Malvern who can afford to support their loved one financially to undergo surgery can have access for them to change their birth record. But the family in Melton, who may find the cost prohibitive, can't. It creates an environment where your bank account determines your rights in society. By making the process to change details easier by requiring a statutory declaration and an application supported by another adult, the need for invasive, risky and possibly unnecessary surgery is removed. Financial and health considerations would no longer be a consideration for someone's identity in Victoria. An administrative record should be addressed by a simple administrative process, not a medical procedure. Those opposite who at times complain about too much government red tape should be supporting this amendment. The need for the Victorian public servants to be bogged down with the processing of medical records or providing for a medical professional to perform or verify medical examinations are demeaning to the individual and are a waste of government resources and should be removed. Our medical professionals have far greater, greater things to do than perform an invasive examination that degrades the human dignity of individuals, simply to satisfy a bureaucratic process. Why do we require others to undergo medical procedures and examinations that reflect how they have always seen themselves? The government during this review has consulted with the Australian Medical Association, the Royal College of General Practitioners, the Australian Psych Psychological Society and other clinics specialising in treatment and care to trans, gender diverse and inter intersex children and adults. We know from mental health professionals that the trans and gender diverse community often experience worse mental health outcomes than the rest of the community. I'm encouraged by this government's commitment to the Mental Health Royal Commission. I'm also encouraged by the many submissions to that commission that highlight the needs of the LGBTIQ community, including the effects on trans and gender diverse people. A more inclusive society leads to better mental health outcomes that benef benefit all of us. Better mental health outcomes means less stress on family, first responders, on medical professionals, teachers, public servants and everyone. During the lead up to this amendment, my office, like many others here, has been approached by many groups and individuals concerned with the proposed changes. Often they, like the opposition, claim that women will be put at risk if changes are made. Like those opposite, there is a feigned concern and mention of wellbeing and safety. During my time as a paramedic, I can't think of a time where I have ever been called out to a situation where a trans or gender diverse person had abused a woman, child or any other vulnerable person. What I can tell you is that 
Ambulance Victoria paramedics are called out to the results of horrific violence inflicted on people who have caused no offence to their attackers other than them just simply being who they are. The arguments against this legislation made to my office call on me to think about safety and wellbeing whilst conveniently ignoring the safety and wellbeing of part of our community that are at greater risk and at much higher rates. The trans and gender diverse community are estimated to be nearly twice as likely to suffer sexual violence as any other group in our community. The Royal Commission into Family Violence taught us that there can be greater risk to women and children coming from the so-called traditional values. Heterosexual males are overwhelmingly more likely than women to be perpetrators of family violence than victims. We know that a leading cause of family violence comes from gender inequality. I would encourage those who have contacted my office citing concern about abuse of vulnerable people to focus on the real threat to women and family violence. Their efforts may have greater impact if they contact Liberal and National MPs to encourage them to commit to the like, like this government has to the full implementation of the recommendations from the Family Violence Royal Commission. There have been some concerns raised with me regarding fraudulent and improper use of this amendment. Although I believe that there will be very few cases for improper use, there are safeguards included within these amendments. Suggestions that an individual will go through the struggle and anguish many in the community go through for some kind of gain is fanciful and insulting to the individuals concerned and their families. I have more concern about the behaviour of some individuals and their dreamt up scenarios than the actual risk of fraudulent use of these amendments. However, the registrar has the power to require further information to ensure a record isn't being changed for the wrong reasons. An applicant's declaration must also be accompanied by a supporting statement affirming it was made in good faith. There are already penalties under the Birth, Deaths and Marriages Act for making false representation that deal with this issue. The Oaths and Affirmations Act 2018 makes it an offence to make a false statutory declaration, possibly resulting in fines and up to five years of jail. Illegal and fraudulent use of this act, like any other illegal activity, has consequences. Claims that someone may act fraudulently is not a compelling argument not to pass this amendment. It would be quite a lot of effort and risk to go through if, has been suggested to me, someone wanted the right to use the ladies' room. I would also like to mention that my office has also received positive support for these amendments. One religious perspective that I was pleased to receive recently was from Reverend Jean Beale. Jean wrote to me as a constituent and has agreed to have her email read out. And it goes, as a Christian minister, I would like to add a balanced religious response, unlike my conservative counterparts. I totally support the proposed reforms that will be introduced to the Victorian Parliament that will make it easier for trans and gender diverse people to update their birth certificates to match who they really are. It will make a huge difference to their lives and no different to any, everyone else's. Please know there are many religious ministers that are all for making life a better place for our LGBTIQ community. Please help us in the business of saving lives. To not have the added pressure of anti-trans aggression Yours respectfully, Reverend Jean Beale. It was refreshing to see a balanced response from a religious minister that reflects the opinion of a large proportion of whom they serve. Her reminder that being in the business of saving lives is a responsibility of all of us must be involved. Discrimination burdens all of us, but removing barriers to inclusiveness improves and benefits all of us. By allowing the dignity, dig, dignity and authority of the individual helps gain respect and self-confidence of that individual. As a society, we gain collective respect and self-confidence by supporting amendments to legislation like this one. I support the trans and gender diverse community, and I will support this legislation, and I commend the bill to the House.